Not at all. Not at all. Um, just to uh, get us focused again, if Tim could pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 2, and if you could go back to those paragraphs we were just looking at, and Mr. Valerio, um, let's pick up here. Third line down at the end of the line, it says, this footage, uh, sorry, the paragraph up top, third line down, there you go. This footage was stealthily circulated last April. You see that? I do. Okay. Now, and then we were, you told us about Mr. Well, he says the Hulk lawyered up because he claims he was secretly killed, right? Yes. You see that? Okay. Now, where we were going is the next paragraph. It says, it opens, you see that? It opens with Hulk Hogan performing oral sex on the woman as she lay on the bed. Then another man's voice can be heard from inside the room off camera. And both Hulk and the naked woman engage in idle chit-chat with the mystery man. Because the woman closely resembles Mrs. Clem, some have suggested that the voice of the mystery man is, in fact, Bubba the Love Sponge. If this is true, Bubba has no problem sharing his wife with his best friend. Do you see that? I do. Okay. And then it continues. It says, quote, you guys do your thing, close quote, this man says. Quote, I'll be in the office if you need me. Close quote. You see that? I do. Okay. And then the beginning of the next paragraph says, he exits swiftly and allows Hulk and this woman their privacy. Correct. You see that? Yeah. Okay. Now, in the proceedings last week, there was a focus on allows them their privacy. Were you here for the opening? The opening? Yeah. Okay. But if you remember that being highlighted. I do. Okay. Were you intending, you authored this piece on October 4, were you intending to express an opinion about the privacy of the participants there? Well, I was using privacy in the sense that Bubba, the Mrs. Clem's husband, had left the room. That's, that's what you're referring to. I mean, it was leaving... Hulk Hogan and his best friend's wife alone to have sex. Okay. What did you mean to convey to your readers by including that description of those events in your story? That uh, there didn't appear to be that much privacy given the fact that it was being filmed. And did it strike you as unusual that there would be sexual activity taking place and a third party would be present at least for part? Yeah, yeah very unusual. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. testimony a moment ago when you reference your standard of newsworthiness being a child celebrity of, over the age of four you were you were joking is that what you just said I did say that yeah. you think that's a funny topic to joke about child pornography no not at all and at the time that you made that joke you were in a deposition right yeah you were in a deposition and asked a question about one of the central issues in this case were you not Central issues in this case, which was what? Newsworthiness. Yeah. That's your defense, right? That's the First Amendment? That is. And, and when you were asked a question about newsworthiness, you made a joke. Is that what you're telling this jury here today? No. You just said you were making a joke, Mr. Valeria. Do we need to read back your testimony? 
you can read back the testimony, sure. Okay. Can we read that back? about newsworthiness, correct? About the newsworthiness of what? Child pornography. Mm -hmm. You were joking about child pornography, were you not? You've already seen the footage of this, and I was sarcastic. Oh, you think the footage shows that you're being sarcastic? I absolutely do. Okay. We'll look at that in just a second. Go ahead. Okay. You were under oath at your deposition, right? Yeah. You raised your right hand and you swore to tell the truth? I did. And you had three lawyers in that deposition with you, did you not? You had Mr. Berlin, correct? Yeah. And you had Heather Dietrich, who was in-house counsel and president for Gawker Media, right? Yes. And all, you also had Leah Smith. She was in there as well. Who was Leah Smith, sure. And it was videotaped, right? Yes. I mean, you saw the videotape across from you at the table, didn't you? Yeah. So you knew you were being recorded, right? I did. And you knew it, there was a potential that it was going to be played in front of this jury, didn't you? Not at that time, no. But you knew it was being recorded, right? I knew it was being recorded. Right? It wasn't like there was a hidden camera in the deposition room that you didn't see? No. And you understand that that deposition was important, right? I do. I mean, this is an important case, isn't it? Yes. It involves the First Amendment, right? Yep. So you don't think that the transcript in this case accurately reflects what you were trying to convey in, in that deposition? Is that Absolutely what you're saying? not. Yeah. Okay. Do you recall after your deposition being sent an errata sheet? What's an errata sheet? You were sent a sheet after your deposition where you could read your deposition and make any corrections in the event that anything in, in it was inaccurate. Do you recall that? Yes. And you did that, right? I did. You read your deposition carefully, didn't you? I did. You bring that up, John. That's your signature, isn't it? That is. And the only thing that you changed in this deposition was the transcription of posting question to posting in question, right? That's the only thing that you changed. That seems correct, yeah. You didn't go back and change your testimony about a four-year-old celebrity sex tape being newsworthy, did you? Uh, if I had the opportunity to insert that I was joking, I would have. But you didn't do that, did you? No, I did not. I didn't know it was And involved. your lawyers were involved in that process too, right? They were. And if you go to the next page, you see here that you declared under penalty of perjury that you've read the entire transcript of my deposition taken in the above caption matter or the same has been read to me and the same is true and accurate, right? Yep. And you signed that. That's your signature. Yes. November 11th, 2013, you signed it. Yes. So there was nothing else in your deposition that you thought was inaccurate, correct? Uh, at the time that I signed this, uh, no. I don't think so. John, put it here. You, right? That is me. Those are your words? Yes. Are you laughing there? Yep. You're laughing. Yes, sir. Your testimony under oath before this jury with that image up there is that you're laughing at that point in time? It's not out loud laughter, no, but it is a smirk, yeah. It's a smirk because you don't think the First Amendment's that serious, do you? It's very serious.
Mr. Leary, you have a copy of your deposition transcript in front of you, correct? Correct. Okay. And I believe you testified just a moment ago that you were interested in the um, Hulk Hogan sex tape story when you heard about it in March of 2012. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Could you turn to page 113 of your deposition? Okay. You have that page? Yeah. I'm going to read, I'm going to start with the questioning at line six. Did you take any affirmative steps to try to get a copy of it? No. You did not? No. Why not? It just, it was just not of like immediate interest to me at the time, and that's it. That's your testimony, right, about the Hulk Hogan sex tape story? That is. It wasn't of immediate interest to you? No. Correct? That was your testimony under oath in 2013. Was that of immediate interest in me to acquire the tape? No. Now, when it comes to your test for publishing things, you follow Mr. Denton's test, is that correct? Which is the test you're referring to? Is it true and is it interesting? That's your test, right? Sometimes, yeah. And in the, the time period, uh, I think you said five years that you worked with Mr. Denton, you followed his rules, didn't you? I, most of the time, yes. And do you recall giving an interview to philly.com in 2011? In 2011? Yes. you have to remind me of it, but Close. vaguely. It should be on the screen in front of you. Do you recall this article? Yes. And you recall um, speaking with the author of this uh, piece? Yes. And if you turn to page two, there's a highlighted portion there. It's a quote from you. Can you read that, please? It's become so commonplace to criticize what we do and focus on the ethics when the reality is I work for Nick Denton, the founder of Deadspin's parent company, Gawker, who doesn't, ad who doesn't adhere to those rules. If I worked somewhere else, would I do that? Probably not. But people want me to adhere to the rules at their job instead of what I'm asked to do here. That was your quote, correct? Yes. And the things that you were asked to do at Gawker are different than they would be at other publications, right? Um, yeah, definitely. And one of the things that we've seen, I mean, you've been sitting in here during the course of this trial, correct? Correct. You've been watching attentively, right? Yes. And if one of the things that we looked at on Friday was uh, P81. One of the things that Mr. Denton wanted was exclusives, right? You remember this memo that's referenced in this article that Mr. Denton wrote? Uh, yeah, I remember that memo. And he wanted exclusives because some page views are worth more than others. Is that right? That appears to be true. Yes. And. In particular, he asked for writers to be more provocative, right? Where is that line? Go to that page, John. You see that last paragraph? Uh, yes. So Mr. Denton asked for people to focus their energies on stories that had the potential to break out on Twitter and Facebook, right? Uh, yeah. And the reason for that is because of traffic, right? Um, readership, sure, yeah. Um, Mr. Denton's a rule breaker, isn't he? In what capacity? Well, look at page 108 of your deposition. Lines 11 through 13. Okay. Your testimony was that Mr. Denton enjoys being a rule breaker, right? Yes. But you not so much, right? Mm, yeah. So you were asked to break rules by Mr. Denton, right? No, necessarily. Let me ask you, one of the things that, that Mr. Sullivan asked you about, you testified that you didn't speak with anyone at Gawker before publishing this story. Is that correct? That's correct. 
play quick save. Who's talking to you about the story of what was said? Uh, my recollection is hazy, and I, well, I'd have to tell you how I believed it all went down uh, based on how it usually goes down, um, which is that, uh, I can't say this with absolute certainty, but I think that I had a conversation with AJ Delario on the fire escape outside the fourth floor of the Gorka office. Well, that's why we would normally have these kind of conversations. All right, so tell me about the conversation we had on the fire escape. I had a vague recollection of a degree of excitement on this part. Um, excitement about the story. Did he tell you what the nature of the story was? I don't think he went into any, any great detail. Uh, did he talk to you about having obtained the outside state DVD? Uh, I presume so, but I can't remember any distinct. Did you forget about that conversation? The, the conversation never happened. You're saying that Mr. Denton testified under oath at his deposition falsely about that conversation on the fire escape? He said he believed that may have been the context of when we discussed this, but we did not. And that he remembered a degree of excitement on your part about publishing the story. Again, the conversation never detail happened. if it never occurred, would you agree? I think he was confusing two different conversations. Um, let's also look. at that last, very last one. And anything they take down from three minutes to a minute, 41 seconds, uh, you could have edited out all of the explicit footage, could you not? Yes. And the decision not to do that, was that you were just a story? Now, you were excited about posting this video, correct? Uh, yeah, I could say, say that. Because you enjoyed watching it, right? Did enjoy watching it. And I think you testified earlier that it's because you found it amusing. Is that I correct? Did. Yes. And I think you said that it was, um, it was so grainy that you didn't see, see the need to blur footage. Is that right? Yes. Um, but you also said you immediately recognized Mr. Belay in it. Correct. Is that right? Yes. Now, one of the reasons that you were excited to post this is because you believe publishing this would generate traffic to the site, wasn't it? No, not necessarily. Can you go to page 159 of your deposition? Sure. Line 8, where you were asked the question, did you believe that publishing the video would generate traffic to the site? And your answer under oath was, I believe that it would be somewhat popular, yes. Yep. I read that correctly? Yes. That was your answer under oath at your deposition, right? Yeah. You didn't correct that on your errata sheet as being I did not. And one of the reasons you were excited so much about it is because sex sells, doesn't it? Uh, that's traditionally true, I'm sure. In publishing, yes. And sex brings traffic to websites, doesn't it? Sex oftentimes brings traffic to websites, yeah. So you weren't really surprised then that this, this post that you put up was going to bring traffic to the website, were you? Traffic in general, like there would be more than one reader? Right. No, I was not surprised there would be more than one reader for this particular story. And websites that show celebrity nudity do better than ones who just write about it, don't they? Uh, yes. I believe you testified here today that there were previous dealings between Mr. Burton and Deadspin, is that right? 
previous dealings, I think there was an email. Was that to you while you were at Deadspin? Possibly. So you had dealt with Mr. Burton before? He had emailed the site before. And, but you were aware of that, right? When I went back and looked and searched for Tony Burton's name after he emailed me about this, I noticed that he emailed me before, yeah. So you were aware of that at the time of your 2013 deposition, that Mr. Burton had had previous communications with Gawker Media? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Can you turn to page 140 of your deposition? Sure. Starting at line 7, did Gawker Media, to the best of your knowledge, have any previous dealings with Mr. Burton? And your answer under oath on line 10 was not to my knowledge, right? Yes. And I think one of the things that you testified to was that who Mr. Burton represented wasn't really that important. Is that right? Uh, yeah. So you knew, though, from the, two, the March of 2012 reports that Mr. Vallejo was claiming that he was secretly recorded, right? Uh, yeah. And you did no investigation whatsoever into the motives of the person who was providing you with this DVD of him, right? Nope. You didn't care, did you? I didn't care in reference to the story that I was going to write. And you, you never, before you published this video of Mr. Belay naked and having sex, you didn't consider whether there may be some vendetta against him, and that was the reason that you were sent to tape, did you? No, I did not consider that at all. And I think you testified earlier today that Mr. Burton was a fan of Deadspin, is that right? I believe so, yeah. He was actually a fan of yours, though, wasn't he? Well, I thought he was referring to Deadspin, and since I was editing Deadspin at the time, that's what I meant by a fan of mine. You're, you're referring to your deposition testimony, correct? I am. Because you testified in your deposition that initially Mr. Burton said something along the lines that whoever his client was was a fan of yours, correct? Correct. You also went through your actual post today. Okay, now, the, the title that you wrote for this piece, even for a minute watching Hulk Hogan's Hulk Hogan have sex in a canopy bed is not safe for work, but watch it anyway. Yes. You wrote that, correct? I did. And the title encouraged people to come watch the tape, didn't it? Uh, yeah. And. They that was something you referred to as being something that shameless voyeurs and deviants would do, right? Those are your words in the article. Point to me where I said that shameless voyeurs and deviants would do that. John will highlight it for you. Yeah. Okay, I'm generalizing there. Okay. But those are your words, right? Shameless voyeurs and deviants. That's correct. Come watch this tape, right? Most people watch celebrity sex tapes sometimes, and that's what I'm referring to as shameless voyeurs and deviants. And you also say it's something we're not supposed to see, right? Yes. Title says nothing about celebrity sex tape in general, does it? Excuse me, can you repeat that? Your title says nothing about celebrity sex tapes in general, does it? No. And I think... Your testimony earlier today was that you, you watched the tape a few times and decided that you wanted to publish some of the footage. Is that right? It was one or two times. And I think you also testified today, actually just a few moments ago, that you couldn't tell that it was secretly recorded, right? I believe so, yes. Yeah. Because you were clarifying the portion of your article where you say Mr. Vallejo was claiming that he was secretly recorded, but your testimony under oath today was that you personally couldn't tell from watching the tape that he was secretly recorded, correct? Uh, yeah. Can you go to page 183 of your deposition? 23. 183. 183. We're going to start at line 25 and go to the next page. Question. You understood when you watched the video that it was recorded from a hidden camera, correct? Your answer was yes, wasn't it? I'm sorry, can you point me to where we're at? Start at line 25, the very bottom line on page 183. Okay. See that? We're with OK. OK. And it says, you understood when you watched the video that it was recorded from a hidden camera, correct? And your answer was yes, wasn't it? 
Yes. Now, you weren't aware of any evidence when you first posted this story that Mr. Belea knew at the time of the encounter that he was being taped. Is that right? That's right. Can you repeat that? You weren't aware of any evidence when you first posted this video that Mr. Belea knew at the time of this encounter that he was being taped, right? Any evidence? Right. No. And you didn't contact any of the people involved in this before you posted it, right? That's true. In fact, you didn't care if it was secretly reported, did you? Uh, it wasn't relevant to the story that I was going to write now. If we look at your post, let me pop that down. On the right-hand side, there's a number of items there. You see those? I do. What are those? Oh, those are other stories on the Gawker homepage, I believe, from that day. And what happens if, if someone who went to the Hogan story that you posted clicked on one of those? They would go to another story on the page. And there would be ads on those pages, right? I couldn't tell you for sure, but if you want to click through them, I'll... That would typically be the case, though, right? There were You took ads, I believe you testified earlier today, off of not safe for work materials, right? I took it off of this one in particular. But the other stories that Gawker writes typically have ads on them, right? Yes. That's how you guys make money, right? That's how most publications make money, yes. And then if you go to the very last page of this, you see those boxes down there at the bottom? I do. What are those? Uh, those are links to other Gawker Media properties. Okay. Those are the other websites that Gawker Media operates, right? Yes. So Jezebel, Jalopnik, io9, Gizmodo, Kogutu, Deadspin, Lifehacker. If somebody were to click on one of those, what would happen? They would go to that site. So at the bottom of the, of the article that you wrote, Gawker is promoting its other websites, right? Yeah, those are typically at the bottom of all Gawker Media stores. I think one of the things that you said was you wanted to get some wrestling fans when you wrote this piece, right? I just mentioned that. I didn't want to get them. I thought they would be interested in this. That's not Gawker.com's typical audience, is it? No, not necessarily. Gawker.com shoots more for millennials, doesn't it? No. That's not your typical base. That's not my typical base, no. What no, about the site as a whole? Have you ever heard Mr. Denton? say that Gawker's sort of bread and butter audience is millennials? Recently, but not at this time. Um, now, I think you also said that you, you were aware from your childhood at least that um, Mr. Vallea, Hulk Hogan was iconic, right? Yes. And, and that would generate more traffic to the website, wouldn't it? If you posted a story about an iconic figure? Not necessarily. But in this case it did, right? It did. Let's talk about the actual contents of the tape that you posted. None of the contents of that tape were public before you published, right? Uh, some of the stills, I believe, from that were public. Let's go back to page 123 of your deposition. What page? 123. Okay. We're going to start at line 23. See your answer there? Yeah. I do. Based on my understanding, the existence of the sex tape, you know, was out there. The actual contents of that sex tape were not out there. And this was the best way of at least giving, showing some of that. That was your testimony under oath, correct? That is, yes. The contents weren't out there. That was your testimony. I read that right? Yes. So that's what made it an exclusive for you, wasn't it? Um, well, somewhat, sure. Let's go to page 181 of your deposition transcript. Start at line 19. Just the first time writing about the story was when we received the tape, so the tape was actually part of the story. And you were asked, that's what made the story exclusive for you, right? And yes. you said, yes. That was your testimony under oath, right? That is. And in fact, the whole point of your post was to A, prove the existence of the tape, and to B, commentate on what you witnessed, right? Correct. And the majority of your article is just a play-by-play -play of the tape, isn't it? 
The bulk of it is yes. Now, the existence of the tape wasn't news, was it? The existence of the tape was already news. Yeah. Well, let's go to page 206 of your deposition transcript. 206? Yes. Let's start at line 6. So there was not a question then as of October 2012 that a sex tape existed, correct? Your answer was correct. And so the existence of the tape then was not news as of that day. And what was your answer? I'm sorry, can you point me to the part? Where we're sure. At? It's at page, where we started at line 6. At line 6? On page 206. Okay. Got so it. there was not a question then as, as of October 2012 that a sex tape existed, correct? Your answer, correct. And so the existence of the tape then was not news as of that date. And your answer was correct, right? Correct. And in fact, Mr. Balea had actually verified the existence of the tape before you posted it, hadn't he? He had verified the existence of the tape? Yes. Yes, he had. So really then, out of your points A and B, the whole point of the story was to commentate on what you witnessed in the tape, wasn't it? Yeah, because it was newsworthy. And even if the existence was an issue, you could have established that without actually showing explicit footage, couldn't you? I could have done that, sure. You could have edited out all of the explicit footage, couldn't you? Uh, I could have. But you didn't do that, right? I did not. You believed that publishing the video without censoring it was going to bring traffic to the site, right? Again, you know... The whole entire point of publishing on Gawker.com is to bring traffic, so whether or not this tape made it traffic larger or smaller, I mean, that was really not my concern. This is the way I chose to present this story. When you edited this tape, you made sure the readers saw Terry Belay's penis, did you? I didn't edit the tape. When you were involved in the editing process, you made sure that the readers saw Mr. Belay's penis, did you? Uh, yes. And you instructed the person who edited the tape, didn't you? I did. Because this was your story, right? Yes. And the reason that you wanted to show his penis and what you posted on the internet for everyone to see was that you wanted to add color to your commentary. Is that right? Are you reading from my deposition here? Or? I'm just asking you a question. That's why you did it, right? That's why I included images of his penis? Yes. And I included images of his penis because that's sometimes what happens when two people have sex, that there are new body parts involved. All right, let's go to page 121 of your deposition. Sure. Let's look at line 21. Did you think showing the size of Hulk Hogan's penis was newsworthy? And your answer was, in the case of this, I wouldn't call it exactly newsworthy. I would say it was more to add some color to my commentary. That was your answer, correct? Yeah, that's a pretty sloppy answer, but sure. Let's actually go back to the story. How'd you describe his penis? Was that, what was that color commentary that you added? Do you remember? Yeah, if you can go to the exact line, I'll be happy to read it out loud. That second page, Sean. The paragraph that starts with "You got a rubber." Okay. How'd you, so, you see it in there? Yes. How'd you describe his penis? Still appears to be the size of a thermos you find in a child's lunchbox. That's that's the imagery you decided to convey there. I did, yes. And when you were talking about bringing in wrestling fans, wrestling fans being interested in this, I mean, that includes kids, right? You understand no. that there's kids that are interested in Hulk Hogan? No, not necessarily. You don't think any kids are interested in Hulk Hogan? Oh, I'm sure there are kids interested. I don't think there are kids interested in Gawker.com. Right. But what do you think is going to happen when a kid types in Hulk Hogan video? They're going to go to your story, aren't they? Not at all. You don't think that's going to happen? I don't. If you type in Hulk Hogan video, I'm 
sure there are plenty of other videos of Hulk Hogan wrestling. And, and there's also probably plenty of videos like the ones that showed up on the porn sites after you posted this video online, right? Can you repeat that question? Yeah. There's probably also lots of videos up on porn sites that simply took the footage you put up of Mr. Bollet and reposted it, right? Right. Now, Mr. Bollet's penis had no news value, did it? Mr. Bollet's penis had no news value? Was that what you just said? Yes. Uh, no. His penis wasn't newsworthy, right? Uh, no. And you also wanted to be sure that you, uh, your readers saw Mr. Bollet and Heather Clem having sex, right? I did. But there was no news value to the positions that they had sex in, right? Um, no, not necessarily. And you also intentionally included their conversations that they were having in that private bedroom, right? Uh, yeah, I just included the conversations to match up with the stuff I was speaking about in my piece. Yeah. And the fact that Mr. Balea was taped having sex with his best friend's wife, that wasn't the news hook for your piece, was it? I'm sorry, can you repeat that again? I'm not sure. The fact that Mr. Balea was taped having sex with his best friend's wife wasn't the news hook for your piece, was it? Uh, no, not necessarily. I believe you were asking questions earlier about some public statements that you had heard uh, that Mr. Balea had said prior to your posting, right? Correct. And you talked about your knowledge of Mr. Balea's wrestling career? Yeah. Okay. Your, your article doesn't make any mention about his wrestling career, does it? No. Doesn't make any mention of any statements that Mr. Belay had made on the Howard Stern show, does it? That does not. It doesn't make any mention of Mr. Belay's autobiographies, does it? Uh, it does not. Doesn't make any mention of Mr. Belay's wife's autobiography, does it? It does not. Doesn't make any mention of any things that Mr. Balea had said or images that had been shown on his reality show, does it? It does not. In fact, you weren't even aware of statements that Mr. Balea had made publicly about most of those things when you posted this story, were you? In terms of what? Things that he had said about his sex life. You weren't aware of statements like that, right? Um. Not necessarily, no. I mean, I heard him on the Howard Stern show um, after the fact. But. but you weren't trying to disprove anything that he had said publicly in your piece, right? I wasn't trying to disprove anything he had said publicly. All I was trying to do was show the portions of the tape that I thought were interesting and then write about the tape that I watched. So you just wanted to put up what Mr. Denton called pornography, right? So now I want to put up pornography. Now, you agree that if you knew that Mr. Balea would have been emotionally distressed by this, you still would have published it, right? I believe I said that. Yeah. And you didn't care whether it would emotionally distress him, right? Um, that's not my job. I think you said your job is to put information out in the public, right? Yes. And in this case, information was nude pictures and images of someone having sex, right? Uh, part of the information is really and, it, and you put that out in the public because you believed it was true and it was interesting, right? Yes. And it didn't really matter whether or not it was a morbid and sensational crime into people's lives for its own sake. That didn't matter to you, did it? No. No further questions, Jeff.